If there's a common thread between what we just heard about the circular economy, about the previous talk from James, and about Lauren, who's about to come up. Lauren Anderson is, by the way, the Chief Knowledge Officer, so another addition to the C-suite stuff, the c something -o. Chief Knowledge Officer of um, Collaborative Economy. Now, she's going to talk about collaborative consumption. And this is all about the disappearance of the middleman. And I can tell you for a fact that some people that we work with on the other side um, of this city, up towards George Street and beyond, who have very, very big industries that provide group services to people, are currently very, very nervous about people like Lauren, who are helping to drive aggregation, understanding, and collaborative design and put together of services to push to people, which means they might end up going out of business. How are they going to do that, Lauren? Come and tell us. I will give a little bit of an insight. Thank give you. Give Lauren a round of applause. <laughs> Side face. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's fantastic to be here. And actually, I am very impressed with the hush of the crowd. It's, it's you're very studious for a, uh, for a Wednesday evening. So as my title slide suggests, I'm here to ask the question and also, I guess, share with you some insights about why I believe that collaborative consumption will transform the economy. So by way of a little bit of background, uh, for the last four years, I've been working with my colleague, Rachel Botsman, who wrote a book named What's Mine Is Yours, The Rise of Collaborative Consumption, to, to research this growing wave of startups all around the world, from uh, Europe to Africa to South Korea to Brazil to the USA to Canada, and of course, right here in Australia. And these startups were doing something quite different to what we'd seen over the last few decades. We were seeing the emergence of bike sharing, car sharing, social lending, peer-to-peer -peer accommodation, uh, book swaps, baby goods, toys, all of these things being traded peer-to-peer. -peer. And of course, the latest, uh, I guess, trend in the space, dog sharing, for those of you who can't commit to having a pet but maybe could borrow somebody else's for the weekend. And, and what was happening here, you know, over the last five years or so, these companies were actually reacting to a massive shift in the economy. These four key drivers that actually brought us to a point where we realized enough was enough. We couldn't continue to act, trade and consume the way we had in the years gone by. We were experiencing a value shift brought by by the, the change in environment, well, the change in the economy, first of all, of course, with the global financial crisis. And then, of course, as a result of the, the it, uh, environmental pressures we're all facing as a world, where we realize we can't continue pr to produce and consume at the rate we always have for the last few decades. And of course, on top of all of that, uh, the technological innovation that was actually helping us to make this shift much more seamlessly. We were now able to tap into these three key ingredients, uh, these, this holy trinity of technologies, if you would, will. Uh, social technologies, things like Facebook, which really only became relevant to us back in 2007 and have since you know, changed the way we do business largely. Uh, mobile technology, this wasn't about being behind your desktop anymore, this was about doing things in your everyday life out and about with these devices that you have in your hands. And of course, location has actually become a critical part of that ingredient. As, as James will, I'm sure, tell you later with TwoShare, we need to be able to tap into not just the physical uh, presence of where we are, but of the stuff all around us and how can we locate these things. So this holy trinity of technology was giving us the efficiency and the trust we needed to bring about a completely new shift in the economy that we call collaborative consumption which is the reinvention of some of these really old traditional market behaviours, such as bartering, swapping, trading, exchanging and lending. But enabled to do, we're enabled to do this on a different scale and in ways that hadn't actually been possible before this time. So take car sharing, for example. We've heard about GoGet. We're actually giving away our cars, our physical ownership of these assets, and shifting towards an on-demand model where we can borrow these things when we need them and only pay by the hour. And this isn't just a, a kind of local trend that's happening. This is a global movement towards a car-free or a shared car society. Where we're at now, we have about 11 million members of car-sharing schemes around the world. By the year 2020, it's anticipated to be 31.2 million people around the world sharing cars instead of owning them. And that's because they are idle assets. They're sitting idle for about 23 hours on average per day, and we're looking to make more of them. And of course, big brands are starting to notice this trend, BMWs jumping on board and creating their own car sharing systems. But can collaborative consumption transform the economy? Well, in fact, I believe it already has. 
If you notice uh, some of these brands up here you'll be familiar with, Bitcoin, Coursera, Airbnb, Kickstarter, these companies are already starting to fundamentally change the way we think about how we access things and how we do things. And another example, um, take you know, the, the process of catching a taxi. Well, the taxi industry is, is in serious trouble with the kind of disruption we're seeing through the collaborative economy. Through companies like Lyft in San Francisco, which has enabled the everyday person to be able to offer a ride to somebody else. Uh, they've, they've all got to drive around with pink fluffy moustaches on the front of their cars, which is the major identifier. But Lyft is now actually available in 60 markets across the US, has received $300 million in funding and a 6% revenue growth every week. And of course, Lyft actually gave way to the likes of Uber, which you'll probably be, be more familiar with here in, in, in Sydney. Uh, we have the black cars, we have Uber Taxi and UberX, which is their Lyft equivalent. But what you may not know is that Uber is actually causing riots all around the world. The taxi industry is not happy. And in fact, just last week, uh, cities all around the world, the taxi industry has gathered together to rally against the likes of Uber. Do you know what happened to Uber? 850% growth in the one day. <laughs> I'm sorry, people, this train has left the station. Another example, Airtasker, is actually changing the way we think about employment. Airtasker can match people who have tasks that need to be done with people who are available to do them and matching skill sets and availabilities in a way that's actually uh, useful to the person who's fulfilling those tasks, giving people part-time work opportunities or flexible work opportunities where they didn't exist before. And as a sign that this is actually completely changing the labor market, we're actually seeing Airbnb have a part, uh, sorry, um, Airtasker have a partner uh, like Career One. So Career One, one of the major workforce employment finders in Australia, has actually said, you know what, you can also find a task on Career One now when you're looking for a job, because that job may be a few weeks away or a few months away, but this task could happen today or tomorrow. So that's a major mental shift. And finally, no story about uh, collaborative consumption would be complete without talking about Airbnb, which I'm sure needs no introduction in this group. But what's important to know about Airbnb is the fundamental shift it's having in the hotel industry. This is a, a heat map of Airbnb in uh, New York City in 2008, you know, the smattering of properties in one of their biggest markets. Fast forward by three years to 2011. And you could literally stay on any block in New York City uh, and have one of those local experiences that doesn't orient itself around Times Square. This is a really big shift in, in the hotel market. And of course, what's probably even more um, confronting for the hotel industry, Airbnb has 550 listings or you know, properties available around the world, of which it owns and pays for none. Uh, and you can see that's actually even more than the likes of the Starwood Hotel Group and just shy of some of the other bigger players. And they're actually covering 99% of the globe uh, against you know, just over 50% for some of the other groups. So this is a huge shift. Silicon Valley is betting on these, on these companies. We're seeing major investment. Uh, Airbnb, more than $250 million and a $10 billion valuation. And just last week, uh, or just a couple of weeks ago, Uber actually had, oh, we need some more Wi-Fi. Uber actually had a $1.2 billion investment in their own company. So that's a phenomenal uh, amount of investment and, and kind of crazy, but when you think about what they're doing, they're changing the logistics of, of delivery and on-demand. And people are actually willing to share, and I think this is perhaps the biggest change that we're realizing. Nielsen did a study that actually showed 68% of people uh, who are part of this survey were actually willing to share trade and exchange with their neighbors. So this is the mindset shift we need to make this thing go mainstream. And, and Forbes estimates that it will generate $3.5 billion in revenue in all of these micro-entrepreneurial activities around the world. So the underlying values driving this shift, collaboration, empowerment, openness, and the human connection that we're looking for when we, when we get together. And ultimately, this is what's driving this great power shift away from some of these companies and these institutions who've been around for hundreds of years and, and heading towards an age of distributed power uh, where we're actually able to connect and collaborate with each other in, in much more new, interesting, and fulfilling ways. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>